everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So I've been going through the one video that I have where it's just asking for video suggestions of different patterns you all would like to see and today I'm going to be doing one of those from that list. So I got a video request for a simple cowl. So that's exactly the project we're going to be working on today. So what this is, is it's a cowl this one's just a single loop. You can modify the pattern if you want to to make it the double loop infinity scarf. And the way it's knit is first we're going to cast on along our bottom edge. Then we're going to join in the round. So this one is knit completely in the round. We're going to work ribbing for a small portion. And then we introduce in this really simple cable pattern that I think adds a lot of fun because the cables you can see are a little bit offset between the columns. So a nice simple cable that adds a little bit of flair to the cowl. Then up here at the top, we're going to go back to our ribbing, lastly cast off, and I'm going to show you how I weave in my ends and block my work. So you're going to find a few things down in the description box below. First, you're going to find each one of the video breakpoints. That way you can fast forward or rewind any specific part of the video that you're looking for. You're also going to find links to all the different materials I used. And lastly, you're going to find this pattern available on my website as a download for free. So that way you can follow along with exactly what I'm saying. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my new videos. And let's get started. Starting off with the materials I'm going to be using for this project. I have my yarn. So this is a medium weight yarn or number four. And this yarn I'm using here is, it's kind of like a red heart or something like that. So it's a value yarn. One of these skeins costs around $4 from Joann's. This one's Big Twist Value and it is denim blue, the colorway. I have one stitch marker, a cable needle. And then for my knitting needle, this is knit in the round. So I have, I think this one's about a 16 inch cord and then I have short knitting needle tips on here. These knitting needles are a size US 8 or a 5 millimeter knitting needle. You just want to make sure your cord plus your knitting needles isn't any longer than around 24 inches. And then I have a ruler to measure my work and my progress. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast on and in total I need 120 stitches. Now you can really use any sort of different cast on method that you'd like for this project. Today, I'm just gonna use the backward loop cast on, which is a really nice and simple cast on method. The way it works is first up, we're gonna start with a slip knot. So to create a slip knot, there are a lot of different ways to do it. This is how I do it. So I lay my tail over my left hand. So I have the working yarn or the ball of yarn further away from me, tail is closest to me. And you don't need that much tail, just around like six to eight inches. Now I'm going to grab onto the strand with my bottom three fingers and I'm going to take my working yarn go back behind my pointer finger underneath then up the front back behind down to the bottom up the front to the top again back behind down to the bottom and now I'm going to grab onto both of those strands with my bottom three fingers. So now it's essentially like I have three or two and a half loops around my pointer finger and now I'm just going to rearrange them. So I'm going to take my second loop move it up over closer to my fingertip point. Then I'm going to take my new second loop, move that one all the way up towards my finger point. Now that newest second loop, slide it off my finger. And now I have a slip knot. Now I'm going to take this slip knot and I'm going to slide it onto either one of my knitting needle points and then just gently tug on that tail to tighten it onto the knitting needle. You don't want it too tight, right? You just still want to be able to move it around. So snug, not tight. Now I also find it's helpful that with my right hand, I hold onto that yarn tail so that I don't accidentally start casting on with it. And now we're gonna begin the actual cast on repeat. So the slip knot does count as the first stitch. So now I need to cast on another 119. So the way this cast on works is you're gonna take your left hand, put it behind your strand of yarn, grab onto it with your bottom three fingers. Now you're gonna take your pointer finger down below the strand up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom again, up the front to the top. So now it's kind of like your knitting needle and your index finger are pointed at each other. Now you're just gonna take your knitting needle, slide that stitch 
off your pointer finger onto the knitting needle and then just gently pull on the yarn to make it nice and snug on the knitting needle. Now without releasing the strand of yarn in your left hand, now again you're just going to take your pointer finger, go back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top. Now again, slide that loop off your pointer finger onto your knitting needle. I got a little caught there. There's my next stitch. And I can just continue repeating that over and over again for the full number of stitches. Now, if you ever accidentally drop your yarn, all you have to do is just set up again. So you're gonna take your left hand behind the strand of yarn, grab onto it with your bottom three fingers, point your finger goes down below, up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom, up the front to the top again. And now you can start sliding those stitches off of your pointer finger onto the knitting needle. And that's what my stitches looks like so far. So now I just finished casting on those number of stitches, and now I'm just going to go back through and double check the number of stitches is correct. So I just wanted to pop in here real quick while we're knitting along and tell you about how you can modify this pattern to basically create any size that you'd like. So in the pattern, I described the exact width of two of these cables using the gauge that I have. So if you multiply two of these cables by the number of pattern repeats that you have, that'll give you the total circumference of your cowl. So if you wanted to make your cowl a little bit wider than mine is now, or kind of like a larger loop, <laughs> you're just going to want to add on multiples of those 12 stitches. You can also easily modify the width of the cowl, right, or kind of like the height here, by just knitting that cable pattern for longer or working a larger section of ribbing at the beginning and the end. So I hope that helps to clarify how to modify this pattern. Okay, now that I've verified that I do have the correct number of stitches, next up what I need is my stitch marker. And now when I pick up my knitting needles, I want to pick up my knitting needles so that my working yarn is in my right hand and my tail is in my left hand. And when I go around my work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure it isn't twisted at all. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it, or really untwist it, so that all these cast on bumps are going down towards the table. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to take this stitch marker and I'm going to put it onto my right knitting needle, or the one with the working yarn currently coming out of it. And next up, I'm going to make sure my working yarn is coming out behind this knitting needle. So what I mean by that is right now it's kind of coming out the front. So when I knit into that first stitch, I would create a yarn over. So I'm just going to move this to kind of coming out of the center of the circle instead. So now I am all set up to begin knitting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right knitting needle point into the first stitch on my left knitting needle, and I'm going to knit that stitch with my working yarn. So when you knit that stitch, make sure you don't have a yarn over, right? If you have a yarn over, your working yarn wasn't in the right place. But if you don't have a yarn over and it just knit perfectly, you're all set to continue knitting. So we're gonna work ribbing on the first about an inch. So we're gonna work knit one, purl one ribbing. I just knit one stitch. So now I need to bring my working yarn to the front and I'm gonna purl the next stitch. Yarn back. Knit one. Yarn front. Purl. I'm going to continue working knit one, purl one, all the way across this round until I get back over to my stitch marker. Now as you start approaching the end of the round or coming back to the stitch marker, you can check to make sure 
your ribbing is lined up properly because you should finish with a purl stitch, right? Because we have an even number of stitches, so your last stitch should be a purl one. Now I'm just going to pass my stitch marker for my left to right knitting needle, and now I'm going to work that exact same ribbing round again. So I'm going to knit one, then purl one all the way across. And you just want to make sure that all your ribbing is lining up. So the easiest way to do this is to read your, like your knitting right below it. So the way you can read your knitting is you want to look for if there's a bump on the front of a stitch. So for example, this stitch right here has a bump on the front of it. That tells me this is a purl column, right? So I'm always going to purl right on top of this stitch. Then right next to it, this stitch doesn't have a bump on the top of it. So that's a knit stitch. Next one has a bump, that's a purl. Next one, no bump, that's a knit. So you want to make sure as you're working across the ribbing, all the knits and purls are lining up. And I'm going to continue working this ribbing round for just about an inch. And this one is up to personal preference too. If you want to make it a little bit longer, you could always go for an inch and a half or two inches. I'm going to go for an inch and I'm going to measure from the bottom of my work up until the bottom of my knitting needle. So now I've finished my first ribbing portion and I'm ready to begin the cable pattern. So the cable pattern is provided two different ways. The first way it's provided is it's written out row by row. And then the second way is it's given in a table form. So in this chart, the way we can read this cable pattern is identified with these arrows. So first up, we can see that we want to read each one of these rows going from right over towards the left. And then we also want to read from the bottom up towards the top. Now each box represents one stitch. So in each one of these repeats, all the way across each one of these rounds, there's going to be a 12 stitch repeat. Now the last thing to note here before we talk about the cable symbols is what the different colors mean. So a gray stitch means purl, a white stitch means knit. And on this cable pattern in particular, we don't have to worry about the right or wrong side of our work. This piece is knit in the round, so we're always going to be reading these rows going from right towards left, and the gray boxes are always going to be purl, the white boxes are always knit. That can be different if you're knitting flat. So first up, let's start with this first row down here at the bottom. So the way we can read this is first we have one gray box. So we would purl one, then we would knit, 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 knit. So knit four, purl, purl, knit four again, then purl one. Then we'd repeat those 12 stitches again and again, going all the way across the number of stitches you cast on. So first up, I'm going to work this repeat all the way across the round. And if you want to, too, another thing you can do is you can add a stitch marker in between each one of these repeats. That way you can keep track of where the cables are going later on up your work. Now I just finished that round with the knit four, purl one. So now I'm going to go up and I'm going to work the next full round. And this round has a cable symbol in it. So I do have a bunch of videos devoted to how to read a cable pattern with a lot of different various cable stitches on it. For this cable pattern, we actually only need to know how to read one cable stitch. So the key factors to this cable stitch are first that it takes up one, two, three, four boxes. So it's a four stitch cable. And we're going to take the first two stitches, bring them in the front of our work, and they're going to go over towards the left. So first up, before I show you that cable stitch, we're going to purl the first stitch because we do have the one gray square first. So I'm just going to purl one. Now I'm going to work that cable stitch. So I'm going to take my first two stitches onto my cable needle and hold them in the front of my work. Then it tells me the stitches going behind are also white, so I'm going to knit the next two stitches that are on my left hand knitting needle. Then 
Now I'm going to knit the two stitches being held on my cable needle. So I just brought those two stitches in the front over towards the left. Now across the rest of this first repeat, I have purl two, knit four, purl one. So I'm going to work that one more time. Now for the rest of this repeat, I have purl two, knit four, purl one. So I'm going to work that real quick. And now I'm going to start back at the beginning of this row again. So I'm going to purl one, and then I'll show that cable stitch one more time. So for the cable stitch, I'm going to take the next two stitches on my left knitting needle, slide them onto my cable needle, hold them in the front of my work. Now I'm going to knit the next two stitches for my left knitting needle. And now I'm going to knit the two stitches being held on my cable needle. Now again, I have to finish across the rest of that repeat. So I'm going to purl two, knit four, purl one. So now I'm going to continue working this row two repeat of 12 stitches over and over again, all the way across round two until I get all the way back to my beginning of the round marker. Then after that, you're going to notice that for rounds three, four, and five, there are no cable stitches in here, right? It's just the regular purl one, knit four, purl two, knit four, purl one. And we're going to work that for rounds three, four, and five. So I've been knitting for a few rounds now, and you can see that first cable start to appear. So now the next round I'm about to work is round six. And on this one, we aren't going to cable on the first set of knit stitches. We're going to cable on the second set. So now the pattern becomes a lot easier to keep track of because we just want to basically cable on the opposite one that we haven't done yet. So first up, I'm going to work my purl one, knit four, purl two. Now I know I'm in the right spot because I haven't cabled these yet. And now I'm going to work that exact same cable stitch again. So two stitches, hold them in front, knit the next two for my left knitting needle, knit the two stitches being held on the cable needle. Now lastly, I just have purl one. So now I'm going to continue working this repeat all the way around round six. Then after round six, again, you can see that seven and eight are just the plain purl, knit four, purl two, knit four, purl one. Same thing with round eight. Once we go all the way up through and finish round eight, then we just go back down to round one and begin again, going all the way up through all of the rows. So I'm going to continue doing that until the length of my cable, or kind of like the height of this cowl, is one inch short of the total length I want it to be. That way I have plenty of room to add in that same amount of ribbing at the top portion. Now there are a lot of different options for how much, or how high you want to make it, right? So a lot of it's going to depend on how many stitches you cast on and how wide it is. So for this one right here, this one's a pretty tight cowl, right? So it's pretty, like the circumference is pretty small. So I'm going to go up for, I think around eight to nine inches is going to be my total length. So I'm going to stop one inch short of that. One thing I want to mention too, is just so that it's symmetric with where we cast on. When you finish, you want to make sure you finish after either around three, right? So you finish right there or after around seven. That way, we're essentially we'd be starting the ribbing with one row after a cable, just like how we had one row of plane before we started the cable at the beginning. 
Okay, so now I've knit all the way up through my cable pattern and I'm ready to add in my next set of ribbing. So for mine, I stuffed my cable pattern at just about seven inches. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working the knit one, purl one ribbing again. And I'm gonna work an inch of ribbing up here at the top. So now that I've finished that ribbing, the last step is gonna be for me to cast off. There are a lot of different cast off methods that you can use, and just about any of them will work for this project. What I like to do is I like to use a really stretchy cast off method, right? Just like this bottom is really stretchy, I want the top to be essentially equivalently. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use the surprisingly stretchy cast off method. So the way this cast off method works is I'm gonna knit the first stitch, then I'm gonna knit the next stitch, and now I'm gonna pass them both back over to my left knitting needle. And I'm just taking my left knitting needle point going into the base of each one of those stitches, going from left to right. Now I'm gonna knit these two together through the back loop. So I'm taking my right knitting needle point, going through the back of both of those stitches, knitting them together. So I just decreased one stitch. Now that we've set it up, now there's just a simple repeat that you can continue working over and over again. So the repeat is knit one stitch from the left-hand knitting needle. Now I'm gonna pass two stitches from my right to left knitting needle. And now I'm gonna knit those two stitches I just passed back over through the back. So I just cast off the next stitch. Now the repeat begins again. So I'm gonna knit one stitch from my left-hand knitting needle. I'm gonna pass each one of these stitches, these two, back over my left knitting needle. Now I'm gonna knit them together through the back loop. And I'm gonna continue doing this all the way around this top border. And just to show you real quick what that bind off is looking like, that is a small portion I've done so far. So I just finished going all the way around the round, casting off each stitch, and now I'm left with the one single remaining stitch on my right-hand knitting needle. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna cut my yarn tail here, and you don't need very much, just around six to eight inches. Now I'm just gonna grab a tapestry needle and thread that yarn tail that I just cut onto my tapestry needle. Now what I like to do to try and prevent there from being like a little step at the end of the round is what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go through the first V over here on the left-hand side, go underneath both sides of it, then I'm gonna take that stitch that's on my right-hand knitting needle and I'm gonna slide it onto the tapestry needle where I'm doing the tapestry needle going from right over towards the left. Then I just thread it back in to that remaining loop over here on the left. And now that just blended that in nicely so that I you can't really tell where the beginning of the round is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave in this end and I will tie a knot. I do prefer to tie knots in my knitting. Not everyone does, you don't have to. So first I'm just gonna weave this down using one of these columns of rib stitches. Now that I'm a little ways away from the end, I'm gonna tie a small knot And now I'm just gonna continue going down that column of stitches from my ribbing. If you wanna really secure it in, you can turn your work and then go up the opposite side as well. Stretch it out a bit, perfect. So now I'm gonna cut my yarn.
Now I'm also going to go back over to my cast on edge down here at the bottom and I'm going to weave in this end as well. Now what you'll notice is that the edge that we cast off ends up being a little bit wavy. So the reason for that is because that cast off is so stretchy, right? You can now stretch this whole thing completely. That's what creates the little waves. So the way we're going to get rid of that is we're going to do what's called blocking. So blocking is where you wash or soak your knitting, and then you either lay it flat or you pin it in place, something like that. So for this piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it in lukewarm water. Then I roll it up in a dry towel to get as much of the water out as I possibly can. And then I'm just going to lay it flat to dry. And I'll show you the finished result just here in a second once I've laid it out flat to dry and it's completely dry. What that's going to do though is it's going to even everything out and it should make this top edge and this bottom edge appear the same. Thank you so much for joining me today as we worked through this cowl. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my new videos. I'll see you next time.